Good afternoon and welcome to the Church of the Holy Trinity in Juneau, Alaska, where we pause in the middle of the day to pray for the world and today especially to pray for healing. The service comes from a Celtic healing service adapted from liturgies from Linus Farm and can be found on our website trinityjuno.org. Click on the link for noonday prayers and scroll down to Wednesday. We come to God whose love makes us whole. We come as we are with our hurts and our ills. We offer our world fragmented and bruised. Knowing God will heal us through Jesus our Lord. Holy God, maker of all, have mercy on us. Jesus Christ, servant of the poor, have mercy on us. Holy Spirit, breath of life, have mercy on us. Let us in silence confess our faults and admit our frailty. Before God, with the people of God, I confess to my brokenness, to the ways I wound my life, the lives of others, and the life of the world. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. Before God, with the people of God, we confess to our brokenness, to the ways we wound our lives, the lives of others, and the life of the world. May God forgive you, Christ renew you, and the Spirit enable you to grow in love. Amen. Illumine our hearts, O Lord. Implant in us a desire for your truth. May all that is false within us flee. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 53. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. All are corrupt and commit abominable acts. There is none who does any good. God looks down from heaven upon all to see if there is any who is wise, if there is one who seeks after God. Everyone has proved faithless. All alike have turned bad. There is none who does good. No, not one. Have they no knowledge, these evildoers, who eat up my people like bread and do not call upon God? See how greatly they tremble. Such trembling as never was. For God has scattered the bones of the enemy. They are put to shame because God has rejected them. Oh, that Israel's deliverance would come out of Zion. When God restores the fortunes of his people, Jacob will rejoice and Israel will be glad. Glory, Glory to, the to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is now, now, and will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. We continue today our reading from the Acts of the Apostles. But Jews came there from Antioch and Iconium and won over the crowds. Then they stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. But when the disciples surrounded him, he got up and went into the city. The next day he went on with Barnabas to Derbe. After they had proclaimed the good news to that city and had made many disciples, they returned to Lystra and then to Iconium and Antioch. There they strengthened the souls of the disciples and encouraged them to continue in the faith, saying, it is through many persecutions that we must enter the kingdom of God. And after they had appointed elders for them in each church, with prayer and fasting, they entrusted them to the Lord in whom they had come to believe. Then they passed through Pisidia and came to Pamphylia. When they had spoken the word in Perga, they went down to Attilia. From there they sailed back to Antioch where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work that they had completed. When they arrived, they called the church together and related all that God had done for them and how he had opened the door of faith for the Gentiles. And they stayed there with the disciples for some time. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. Through Christ, source of creation, we pray for healing of the earth. Through Christ, source of peace. We pray for peace among hostile peoples. Through Christ, source of love. We pray for love in our families and communities. Through Christ, source of joy. We pray for the delight in our lives. Through Christ, source of freedom. We pray forgiveness for past wrongs. Through Christ, source of resurrection. 
We pray for help to make a new start. Christ always walks the world with those who suffer. Let us pray for the broken places of the world. Heal these places. Of the lust for gain that demeans, and of the bitterness of revenge that destroys. Let us pray for those who serve the public health and take part in the process of healing. Healer, pain bearer. May they seek to heal the whole person and be your instrument of love. Let us circle in healing prayer those known to us that we now name. We invite you to add your own prayers and petitions at this time. We pray for the homeless, the hungry, the needy. For Leah, Bill and Janet, Peter and Sharon, For all those affected by this pandemic. We pray for the doctors and nurses risking their lives to help others. We pray for those who are alone, that their depression may lift. Let us say together, Spirit, Spirit of the living, living God, God Present with us now, enter their minds, bodies, and spirits, and heal them of all that harms. Great physician of our souls and bodies, you are always at work in our lives to bring good out of evil. May your sick children experience the same surge of healing power as did the sick woman who touched the hem of your robe. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Lord, hear our prayer. And let our cry come to you. O oh God of grace and mercy, give your blessings to the Diocese of Alaska. Watch over our churches, sustain our people, strengthen our leaders. Through the Holy Spirit, guide and guard the diocese, keeping it always under your care and protection. Just let us be a loving family, serving you in faithful devotion to the gospel of your Son, Jesus Christ. Give your blessings to Mark, our bishop, Give him a spirit of courage and right judgment, a spirit of knowledge and love. Let your Holy Spirit be his companion. Let your gospel be always in his thoughts. May your presence in his life be a light for all to see, in every good work for the building up of your people and to the glory of your holy name. Give us the blessing of your example. Help us to follow in the way of Jesus today and every day. Give us compassion at the center of all we do. Compassion for ourselves as disciples still young in faith. Compassion for others as members of our own family and God. Let us become examples for others as so many others have been examples to us through your love and for the sake of your glory. Watch over all elders and the brothers and sisters of the Society of St. Simeon and St. Anna. If any are in a time of sorrow, sickness, or need, Give them the touch of your healing hand. If any are in times of joy, thanksgiving, or fulfillment, give them the song of the angels to praise your name. Let us be your servants in this life, just as we will be your sons and daughters in the life to come. Our colleague today celebrates the martyrs of Memphis, Constance and her companions. We give thanks and praise, O God of compassion, for the heroic witnesses of the martyrs of Memphis, who, in a time of plague and pestilence, were steadfast in their care for the sick and dying, and loved not their own lives, even unto death. Inspire in us a like love and commitment to those in need, following the example of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. It seems appropriate today that we do commemorate the martyrs of Memphis. 
In August of 1878, yellow fever invaded the city of Memphis for the third time in 10 years. By the month's end, the disease had become an epidemic and a quarantine was ordered. While more than 25,000 citizens fled the city, nearly 20,000 more remained. As the cases multiplied, the death toll averaged 200 people per day. When the worst was over, 90% of the people who remained had contracted the yellow fever, and more than 5,000 people had died. That seems very familiar. During that time, very brave men and women stayed behind when they could have left and nursed the, the, the sick and the poor and those who were dying, and that included sisters from the Society of St. Mary, which is an Episcopal um, order of women, Constance, Thecla, Ruth, and Francis, and two priests, uh, Charles Parson, who was the rector of Grace and St. Lazarus Church in Memphis, and Louis Scheuler, uh, who was the assistant at Holy Innocence in Hoboken, New Jersey, who came down to help. At the end, only two of those workers survived. Um, the altar, high altar at St. Mary's Cathedral in Memphis is a memorial to the four sisters. And the two priests are buried in a common grave, and their monument says, Greater love hath no man. Great Spirit, who broods over the world, restore the garment of our self-respect and remake us in your beauty. Renew in us the stillness of our being, the soundness of our bodies, and the secret of our wholeness. May Christ our Redeemer bring us healing and wholeness. Amen. Amen. 